this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to talk about the RSI indicator, that is the Relative Strength Index. This indicator is one that I'm very familiar with. I use it a lot. I've made several different indicators and strategies based off the RSI, so I'm pretty familiar with it. And in this video we're going to take a look at how you can use this and look at the math behind it so that you can kind of understand what's actually going on to calculate the RSI. Uh, because as if you've seen this series, you'll probably notice that if you know how the math is done for the indicators, sometimes you can predict kind of how the uh, indicator is going to move depending on what the next candle is going to do. So you can think, you know, if this candle is going to be red, then it's going to go down. But in certain situations, you can say, well, if the candle is red, it's actually going to go down a lot because of how the calculation works instead of just a little, then depending on how big it is. So things like that are what we look for. But let's go ahead and take a look with uh, trading view. All you have to do to add this to your chart is just type in RSI when you go to add an indicator. It's the first one on the built-in scripts. You can see it goes from 0 to 100. There's two lines and a range between those. That is, uh, well, these lines, I should say, represent overbought and oversold, which is used to uh, help try and determine where momentum might end or help you see where the trends are currently. And I'll go into more detail on how the RSI is actually used. But for now, we're also going to take a look at some code on how you can actually add the RSI to your chart. Uh, it's very simple. You just use an RSI function. It's built in. You pass in what source you want to use, which is the closing price by default, which is the last price of candle. 14 periods back is the standard for RSI. And when you do that and you plot it on the chart, let's add this to our chart you can see it plots that line that we saw with the other indicator. Now, I didn't plot anything else, so you can't see the overbought and oversold boundaries, but you can see that you can easily add this to your chart. Now, in some of my other videos, I've went through and I've done all the math for these. There's actually quite a lot going on with the RSI, and it would have made this video very long. We're still going to go over the math, but I'm not actually going to type it out for you and do this sort of live coding that we have done on some of the videos to show you this. But the, the resource that we're going to look at does a very good job of explaining how it's actually calculated so you can get a really good understanding on how things actually work. So now that we've got that edit in there, let's go ahead and minimize our pine script area. Take the RSI out here and let's add the default one back in. There we go. This is our default RSI indicator on TradingView. Let's take a look at the Relative Strength Index. I'm going to post this resource link in the description for the video below. So if you're watching, you can just take a look down there and you can have the link directly to this document. But uh, we're going to read over some of these. I'm going to try and summarize what I can, but then we're going to take a uh, more in-depth look at the math when that comes up. And some of this is going to be repetitive. The Relative Strength Index is a momentum indicator that measures the magnitude of recent price changes to evaluate overbought or oversold conditions in the price of a stock or other asset. The RSI is displayed as an oscillator. I mentioned that reading from 0 to 100. Now, the key takeaways, you don't really need to know. It was developed in 1978, but if you want to, there it is. Uh, it compares bullish and bearish price momentum uh, plotted against the graph. And the signals, as we've mentioned, are overbought and oversold, but it actually gives you the levels that are typical for the indicator, which are 70% for overbought and 30% for oversold. You probably won't see them labeled as percentages. You'll probably just see numbers, so you'll probably just see 70 and 30 when you look at a chart. Now, the formula is actually several steps to calculate, and there's actually a lot going on. If you just look at it, it may not look like a lot, but there is, especially if you have to try and code an RSI calculation, there is a lot of references to previous candles that you have to look at, and you have to make sure all the data is correct and you're looking at everything correctly. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step on the RSI is we have to get our average gain and our average loss. And we'll do the rest of this later, but the first thing you need is your average gain and your average loss. Let me zoom in. That'll probably help quite a bit here. 
So we have an average gain divided by an average loss. Now, what the average gain is, is for the RSI period that you're using. So if you're using a 14 period RSI, the calculation here for the average gain is going to look back through all of the 14 most recent candles, and it's going to get the gain on all of the candles that were green. So it's going to tell you how much the gain was in a percentage on each of those candles. And it's also going to go back and find the average loss. And it's very important that you know that the average gain only comes from candles that were green or closed with the higher price and the average loss only includes the average loss of candles that uh, were down in price so that's very important to note because uh, otherwise there's really no point in separating the gain out from the loss you just have the same number so once we do that we can do the rest of this calculation that's really not too difficult the rest of it it's just basic math knowing how you get the average gain and the average loss is actually quite important. And I will point out, actually, there's one thing I forgot, is that the average gain, you actually divide the average gain. Instead of dividing it by how many candles actually had a gain, you divide it by the period of the RSI. So with a 1% average gain, oh, with a 1% average gain, you would divide that by 14 because that's your RSI period. Even if you only had one candle that had a 1% gain and that was your average gain, your 14, uh, when you divide it by 14, you always do that because that's whatever your period is. So if you use a 15 period, you would divide it by 15 here, etc. But it's important to note that you don't divide the 1% by the amount uh, of uh, candles that actually had a gain, you do it with the actual period of the RSI. And if that's confusing, please leave a comment that might be very confusing to some of you if you haven't seen it before. Now, after we do that, there is a bit more. There's a second step. We have our average gain calculated. And now we have to calculate the actual RSI value. And in order to calculate the actual RSI value, we need to look at our previous gain, our previous average gain, 1%, divided by our average loss, 0.8%. But on the next candle here, when we do look back at those numbers, we have to multiply those by 13 because they represent 13 parts of the 14 period RSI calculation. And then you add in your current one. And this kind of gives you a, an average of how these things work. The previous average gain times your period minus one. Don't think this is always 13 uh, when it goes back here. It's always your period minus one plus the current one, which makes up your entire RS period, RSI period, excuse me. Then you just do the rest of the math and it spits out these uh, wonderful lines that you see here. Well, the, the wonderful line that you see here. Now, as far as how to actually use the RSI, there's quite a bit of resources for that. Now, the, uh, the most common way is to kind of look for a trend. It's very easy to notice that, you know, the RSI has been above 50 for an extended period, that the trend must be up, or it's below 50, it must be down. That's one way that it can be used. You can see here the RSI indicator can remain in overbought territory for extended periods while stock is in an uptrend. That's pretty much just what I said. And it can stay in oversold territory for a long time while stock is in a downtrend. That's because it's working with the momentum and in order for it to change the trends on the RSI, the momentum kind of has to change. So that's important to know. The oversold reading in an uptrend is likely much higher than 30%, and an overbought reading on the RSI during a downtrend is much lower than the 70% level. Now, these are the default levels that they talked about earlier in the article here, and I'll go through down here and show you what I mean. I think they had a good picture of this. Where is it? Maybe they don't, but you can see there are adjusted overbought levels that you can use. You can tell that if you were in a downtrend for a long time here, if the price were to uh, bounce off of the 50, then the trend might continue to be down. 
Um, and when you're in an uptrend, you might change your threshold up or, or down respectively, giving it a little bit of room to capture a bottom or try to capture a bottom and maintain the trend. And that might be a bit confusing, but something that hopefully isn't as confusing is the examples of divergences. There are bullish and there are bearish divergences, and the way a bullish divergence is seen is that you have an oversold reading followed by a higher low that matches correspondingly to lower lows in the price. Now, essentially what this means is that, and I'm trying to find a good example here. Okay, let's see. I should have probably prepared this before I started. But it's always good to go back and take a look here. Here we go. Finally, we have a bullish divergence. You can see that the RSI had a higher low and the price had a lower low in that same period. This is what you would call a bullish divergence and it would oftentimes uh, signal a trend change. Now, the opposite is also true for a bearish divergence. So you would look for the exact opposite, a lower high in the RSI and a higher high in the price over the same period. And they also give you an example here of swing rejections. And they have it laid out pretty well here. The RSI falls into an oversold territory. It crosses back above it. And then it dips back down. And then it breaks out of that recent high. You can see they've got that pointed out really well. It went oversold, came back up, dipped, and broke out of its previous high after it came out from being oversold which is a, a pretty simple example of a kind of a breakout. So I think that's pretty much going to do it. And they also give you the bullish or the bearish example, excuse me. But I think that's pretty much going to do it for our RSI video, other than I'm going to show you a couple of other things that are available that I have worked on that you might enjoy. So if you're on TradingView, you can take a look in the public library. You can search for a few of my different indicators here. I have one that's called RSI callouts. This will allow you to show labels on your chart for when RSI values reach above a certain level. So for example, our overbought is set to 80. And once a candle went over 80 on the RSI, here it printed a label on the chart so you could see it. So instead of having to waste your screen space and show that line continuously, it's only going to show you what you really care about. Now, another one that I use sometimes is also the smoothed RSI. This is another one that I have done. Let's see, where is it that I did? Here we go. This one is just your RSI calculation. You can see the red area is overbought. The green area is oversold. But there's also an orange line that isn't typically part of an RSI calculation. This is a smooth line, which uses a moving average to calculate a smoother line of the RSI. Uh, and if you're curious about moving averages, I have other videos about moving averages in this series. So please go check those out. Otherwise, that is it for the video today. Make sure to check out my profile on TradingView because there you can see all of the scripts that I've done. Just click on my profile link in the description and go to the scripts tab and you can see all of those there. But other than that, I appreciate you watching. Thank you and have a nice day.